As the adage goes, all good things must come to an end. We are Don951 and Mecha. Hi. And you're watching the final chapter of my Fire Emblem 6 Hard Mode 0% Girls playthrough. Alright, this epic final chapter is going to be decided mostly by Roy as he walks past two unimportant mannequins to fight the final boss with his binding blade. Um, Roy has to be the one who kills her. Her name is Idun. Um, but he only has two turns to do it, so we need to get Percival in here to chip in for a little bit of damage. And Percival gets to do it because he's awesome and he deserves it. Roy needs to kill her uh, for plot reasons. He doesn't actually need to kill her. It's not like in Fire Emblem 10 where Ike needs to kill the final boss. Um, we only do it just because we get the quote unquote best ending this way, um, which is really not important for gameplay reasons. We just want like you know everyone to be sort of feeling happy about it. But Idu is considered one of the worst final bosses in the Fire Emblem franchise because um, even Percival, who doesn't do super effective damage, still does 16 damage per hit with the Randall and doubles her. And Roy, with his effective Binding Blade, does 31 damage off his base 7 strength. So um, that was a pretty easy fight and a pretty easy final chapter. And after Roy slaughters her, we can safely say that this is the end. We are done. Yes, we're done done, 151. <laughs> 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 Alright, so after um, Roy kills Idun, she, he doesn't actually kill her, she just knocks her out with the uh, restraining power of the Binding Blade. Everyone runs out while Roy sidles up to her and fondles her for a little bit, and then he runs out with her on his back. Whoa, so dark. But he does get her out of the collapsing temple, so she owes him, I guess, and Bernard is just like, Oh dude, you could have died, and Roy was like, No, no way, I'm fine. And then Japanese text. Yes. Merlin, this is always wrong and Roy is always right. That's all you need to know about this game. <laughs> Alright, so the reason that we recorded the epilogue along with the final chapter is twofold. First, um, other, it would be a really short chapter otherwise. And uh, second, everyone is probably a little curious about the unit records. They want to know who got the most kills. They want to know who participated in most rounds of combat. And in this game, the unit records are interspersed throughout the epilogue like the entire uh, 15 plus minutes of it, so we're just gonna have to sit through the entire thing. And in Fire Emblem 6, only the units who get deployed in the final chapter get full unit records, and everyone else just gets like a little blurb at the end. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but at least we get to fill it with a bunch of questions submitted to us by very various fans, I guess, from the Fire Emblem subreddit uh, called our Fire Emblem and people from SF who have been following this playthrough. And we're very thankful to those people who supported us, I guess, and watched the run and say how much they love it. So thank you for that. Uh, we can't answer all the questions, and we also can't really keep track of where the credits are when we're so busy, busy answering questions. So if you want to know how many kills your favorite unit got, uh, make sure to pay attention to the screen, I guess. Um, so I guess we'll just get to the first question. Um, Breath Idol from uh, the Fire Emblem subreddit and Eric Halipour from Stranus Forest. They both are curious about our opinions on FE14 because that's been revealed a while ago. And they also want to know what we think of the gameplay of Awakening. So, what do you think? Well, FE14 first. Um, I'm excited for the series that the new game got announced, uh, especially after the renewed popularity uh, after Awakening's release. I think Awakening did a really good job with. Um, popularizing the Fire Emblem franchise, and I hope the success continues. Uh, on a personal level, I'm not really that excited because I don't own a 3DS, I don't foresee myself owning one in the near or the far future, um, I don't really have an income, and I am very busy with academics in my day-to-day -day life, so I'm probably not going to be playing any more of like the recent Fire Emblem games. Yeah, I've played very few of Awakening. I would like to play more, but for technical region lock reasons, I can't really at the moment. But it's enjoyable from what I saw, and I'm really glad it boosted the Fire Emblem franchise, and I may or may not end up playing FE14, but it looks really good, so I'm looking forward to it. And I hope it just keeps growing the popularity of Fire Emblem in general, because that means it gets more support. Um, there's two people here who would like you to compare this playthrough, this 0% growth playthrough to other playthroughs that like have growth or don't recruit all characters. Um, these are It's a Friendly from the Fire Emblem subreddit and once again Eric Kalipour from Cernus Forest. Alright, so I'll try to keep this short. 
Um, some units in this playthrough would still be good in the girls' playthrough, obviously, because they have great bases, like Percival, and Milady, and Nime, and Yodel. Uh, the last two more for their staff rank than for their actual base stats. Um, some units that would really be improved in the girls' playthrough, units like Saul, who would actually have a magic growth, so he'd be able to warp for a greater range, and he'd be more useful before Nime joins. Um, there needs to be a distinction made between like full rigging low turn count playthroughs and kind of like sticking to the expected values low turn count playthroughs because in a full rigging low turn count playthrough uh, you'd actually be able to rig a magic level up on Saul for every level and he'd be able to like cat magic by the time that you get the warp staff and he'd have something like 17 warp range which is pretty ridiculous. Uh, some other units that would be improved in a girls playthrough are units like uh, Alan and Lance from the very beginning of the game. Um, they didn't feature very much here, obviously, because their bases are pretty terrible, but they are better overall paladins than Noah would be, and they would still see use into the later sections of the game, although they probably wouldn't be like the absolute best units at any point in the game. And then finally, I think the unit that would be the most improved, especially in the context of a full rigging low turn count playthrough, is someone like Lelina, because uh, this is a bit unexpected, but in the later chapters of the game, um, when you could buy the Bolting Tome in the Secret Shop and also use the Bolting Tome that you obtained in Chapter 16, um, you'd be able to one round KO a lot of the bosses from 10 range if she had like maxed out magic, maxed out speed, and a Roy support. And you have to read criticals, but that's that's how it flies. Yeah, there's a user out there. His name is General Horus. He does these rigging playthroughs where he just gets good level ups and breaks criticals when needed to get the absolute lone turn count playthroughs. And he's done playthroughs of 7 and 8 at the very least, and they are very exciting to watch. So I do recommend watching those. And this fair user does ask, um, what chapter in any game you've done was the hardest to plan for and why? Oh boy. Uh, I will only talk about kind of... Um... I won't talk about all of the games that I've played because uh, some of them can be improved and I'm currently working on improving them now, so I won't, like I, I think my opinions on those games probably wouldn't be accurate, but uh, for this playthrough in particular, uh, Chapter 13 was pretty difficult to plan out because uh, I sort of figured out like where I had to move the units, but it was harder figuring out how to actually get the units there in the first place because of all the enemies in the way and because of the bridges in that map restricting the player movement. Um, what else? Chapter 22 was pretty hard, for obvious reasons, I think, because the enemy heroes were so tough, and I had to find ways to get um, Percival to single-handedly kind of kill them all before anybody else could be killed. And I also had to balance all of that with um, optimal use of my stat boosters, because at that point in the game, of course, everyone was still using their boots and their energy rings and stuff. Now, for other Fire Emblem games, uh, Fire Emblem 5, uh, chapter 24X is probably one of the hardest chapters that I had to plan out, and most of you guys listening probably will not have played Fire Emblem 5, and even if you have played Fire Emblem 5, you probably didn't play Chapter 24X, because a lot of people really, really hate that map. Uh, it's a really dumb map, and they choose to skip it. So I basically, do. we I have do. to do, yeah, basically, what you have to do in that map is it's Fog of War, which in Fire Emblem 5 is pitch black. It's not like in Fire Emblem 6 where you can see the rest of the map, sort of. Um, you have to take the staff that you just obtained in the previous chapter and have a certain unit use it to cure an NPC of the stone status. Then you have to have your lord talk to that NPC to recruit her. And finally, you have to escape from the map in a very different area uh, compared to where the NPC originally started. So in 5 and 5, the escape mechanic works such that um, units who do not escape before the lord get lost forever or, sorry, they get captured, but at that point in the game they get lost forever. Uh, so everybody basically, like, imagine a seize map where everybody has to seize the same place. <laughs> and uh, you also have tiles on the map that warp you to, like, sealed rooms that you can't get out of without a rescue staff. Um, all the while, the enemies are warping their own units into harassing. Yeah, it's, I skip that chapter every time because it's too much of a pain. It's not worth the recruitment. But if you're recruiting everyone, then you kind of have to do that. So that's why he went through it. Um, Arisa from Serenus Forest wants to know what makes FE6 particularly good for 0% growth, even though we the question already shows that he knows. But why don't you explain <laughs> it to the Yeah, Arisa kind of answered the question by himself. But... Um... Basically, one of the big things is that this game has a generous staff range formula uh, compared to Fire Emblem 7 and Fire Emblem 8. 
Um, it has basically plus five uh, between games. So like Pent only has nine range because he has base 18 magic. But then Nime, if, uh, if anyone in Fire Emblem 6, if they had base 18 magic, would have um, 13 range. So that's a uh, big boon. In addition, uh, in Fire Emblem 6, the Warp Staff comes a lot earlier compared to Fire Emblem 7 and Fire Emblem 8. So we get to use it for more chapters, and that'll s skip a lot more enemies. Um, the harm bonuses, uh, they make the game a lot harder for us, but also they work in our favor because units like Percival and Milady get pretty amazing boosts from them. And compared to combat units like Harkin uh, in Fire Emblem 7, even Percival, it's probably a bit better because he's mounted. And in Fire Emblem 8, like, the number of units who have really good combat stats in the endgame are zero. So, that's another reason why in Fire Emblem 6, uh, the planning for a 0% gross playthrough is probably a bit easier. Finally, the last factor is Fire Emblem 6 only has Seize maps, and Seize objectives are actually a bit easier to do in 0% gross because you pretty much only have to kill one person on the map, and everything else is just a matter of trying to get um, your lore from point A to point B without him dying en route. And so compared to like a route objective where you actually have to buster as much combat as you can for units that are very bad at combat, or even like kill boss, uh, because the easiest way to do a kill boss map is to like cheese the boss with a critical hit sometimes, and occasionally in 0% growths, uh, your boss killer isn't good enough to kill the boss in like a single enemy phase round of combat. So there's also that to keep in mind. Yeah, I guess those factors make up for the fact that FE6 enemies are pretty competent and really hard to kill sometimes. Um, Lord Raven from Cernus Forest, I feel like I know this guy. Um, when I watch your videos, I feel like your strategies are very optimal and there's very little way to improve things. I'm wondering if you feel like there was a place you think you could have saved turns and for what reason. And for me, the first thing that comes to mind is Chapter 1. Right, we already covered that in the Chapter 1 video. We could have saved a turn if we had uh, had Marcus break a Silverlance critical on the boss. So aside from chapter one, um, right now I'm not in a good position to answer the question because like, you know, I just finished the playthrough, I'm pretty happy about it. Uh, I think I did a really good job on it. Uh, I wouldn't say so myself, but it's kind of like, you know, uh, when you're doing creative writing, you're re it's recommended that you have someone else look over your work for you to check out any mistakes that you made because uh, it's really hard for, you know, a writer to um, basically compose something and then immediately proofread it and see like what he could have done better. It's in, so Fire Emblem is pretty much the same way, I feel like. Now, I do think that um, a lot of the maps are completed in the minimum number of turns possible, like Chapter 13, uh, unless you use the um, Rescue Death bug that uh, would save turns, but it would also involve you just dying. You wouldn't be able to do better in five turns. Uh, I don't think Chapter 14 can be done better than 4 turns in 0% growth on hard mode, for example. But then there are some chapters that might have room for improvement, like Chapter 7, you might be able to find a way to do it in 6 turns instead of 7. So, I don't think I will ever come back to this game on 0% growth, uh, and I don't think the total number of turns that could be saved is anything greater than like 5. Okay, yeah, yeah, I feel that way too. Um, Yojimbo from Cernus Forest wants to know what chapters turned out to be easier or harder than you expected and why. I think I sort of covered this in my uh, answer to Horse's question, um, but I guess like chapter 22 I expected it to be hard and it turned out hard. Chapter 13 I didn't expect it to be very hard and it turned out hard. Uh, I guess I expected chapter 12 and chapter 12x to be a little harder than they were, but um, chapter 12x I planned it out in like less than an hour, so that turned out to be really easy. And, um, what else here? Like, I... Chapter 21 also turned out to be easier than I thought it would be, um, just because, you know, everyone's intimidated by that map, and I was too, because I was afraid I would have to go through a reinforcement zone, and I was afraid that the Wyvern Riders would overwhelm, like Nime or Percival, but it actually didn't turn out to be that much of a problem with, you know, some tools like the Sleep Staff and the Berserk Staff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I want to do this other question from General Horus, just because it seems more entertaining than most. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't do every question, we're already running low on time. Um, what unit, again in any game, have you thought would be bad or even worthless, but ended up contributing at least a decent amount? I know uh, I can think of... <laughs> yeah, in this game, um, I thought, well, okay, way back when I thought Cecilia would be pretty bad, and she actually ends up contributing 
a pretty decent amount. Uh, currently, I'm playing Fire Emblem 10 a little bit, and in my original run of that game, I thought Ileana would be useless, and she's actually been pretty good in part one. Uh, I I don't know what else. I mean, I think Michael, you you should probably answer this question. Yeah, uh, I think Merlinus is like the star of this game. Even though most people, when they talk about Merlinus Epi Six, they're like, "Dude, you have to like make him dodge a hundred hits just to level up." What a worthless guy! But he does so much stuff in this playthrough; it's not even funny. I think he dies like four times. Yeah, I mean, look, you don't have to have him dodge a hundred times to be useful. He just needs to get hit <laughs> once, <laughs> <laughs> and then make sure he stays dead for one chapter. That's all you need him to do. Okay, so. Um, another thing people want us to know, or want to know from us, is um, they want to know what Fire Emblem games we like and what, which ones we don't like. So um, I guess we can say we don't like FE4. I would agree with you on that. It's probably a controversial opinion, but uh, Mekin and I are pretty firm in our dislike of that game. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, it has its fun sides. It has a really overpowered lord and stuff. It's nice to have everyone mounted, but it's, it's such a long game that's so poorly designed. Um, another game we kind of already agreed on that we don't like is FE9 because long and skippable animations, long and boring. I really like fe 9 story though. I really like it. Yeah, I agree. I really liked fe 9 story the first time I played through it. But man, nah, those animations. And I think we both like fe 10 because it's fun. Yeah, the other games, I mean, are more or less equal. I think the games that I really like in particular are Farm 12 and Farm 5. Those are those kind of top my list, and everyone else is in the middle, and then Farm 4 and 9 are at the bottom. Okay, so the last thing that everyone wants, wants to know, and at least Franku from Stern Sports wants to know, do you see yourself doing a lot of playthrough like this in the future? These videos are kind of great, but you're so close to the end. So I've had a lot of um, people ask me, uh, are you going to continue your Fire Emblem 7 uh, 0% girls playthrough in Hector Hard Mode? And the answer is no, I'm not going to continue it. I'm currently working on a revision, but I've since sort of gotten stuck on a couple chapters. Uh, and I've also uh, sort of gotten burnt out on the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem games. So I'm sort of concurrently working on Fire Emblem 7, Fire Emblem 8, and Fire Emblem 10 rev revisions. And I have no idea which one of those I'll finish first. Um, but whenever I do finish one of them, of course, I will be there to commentate, and I'm guessing Michael would be there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be there if I have time, and if not, I will make time. So it does look like that we are out of time. Uh, that will be all for this Fire Emblem 6 hard mode 0% girls playthrough, completed in 157 turns. Our deepest thanks go out to all of you viewers for your continued support and patronage. Until next time, this has been Dondom51 and Mecha. See ya.